SpaceX to shoot first 60 Starlink satellites into orbit, Vacuum Raptor may be ready sooner than later, Falcon Heavy to lift off within 4 weeks and Starhopper gets a new nose cone. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? So let's dive right into the exciting news topics. SpaceX shoots its first 60 of a total of 12,000 Starlink satellites into orbit. On Thursday, May 23rd at 10.30 p.m. EDT, SpaceX launched 60 Starlink satellites from Space Launch Complex 40, SLC 40, at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. SpaceX's Starlink is a next-generation satellite network designed to connect. So much for the official word, but what does this change? These are the first 60 production design satellites of the Starlink system and they are kicking off a beta test. And that beta test is of unprecedented scale. I think I don't have to say that, but I do it anyway. After separation, all of them were able to connect back home. Yay! But what about it? Why do they need this beta test? This first beta test flight will give them the ability to test the satellites in orbit. They will have them in orbit and they will be able to control the whole constellation and test out flight behavior for the satellites. They will be able to simulate a full Starlink constellation, meaning that they will test how these satellites behave to each other and how they link up and what software tweaks to use so they always have the best performance in linking up with each other. Most importantly, they will have real data. Everything else they had so far was simulation basically and now they can finally get the first real data in real behavior in orbit. SpaceX already has permission from the FCC for a small number of ground station and user terminals. Of course, it's just small scale, but that's how it all starts, right? Anonymous sources have said that Elon is using his 6,000 SpaceX employees for this first initial beta test. Elon. Elon, if you see this, I'd like to be part of that beta test. It's more likely though that SpaceX will need more than these 60 initial Starlink satellites for a stable link in the United States, so probably there will be more launches happening before that beta test really kicks off. What's also really interesting to see is how SpaceX chose to release these satellites into orbit in a very untypical way. As you can see in the render, there is no centerpiece in the middle that normally releases these satellites into orbit after the fairing has been deployed. It was a total mess. But isn't that what we all love about Elon's companies? What they do can hardly be called the usual way. But what about it? Why did they choose to do it this way? Well, first of all, they got rid of the dispenser. That's a huge piece of equipment and you gotta get it into orbit. Secondly, Without the dispenser, release is much quicker because you release them all at the same time. See the big piece in the middle there? That's the dispenser. Even if a few of them got damaged, which is unlikely because they built them tougher, SpaceX could care less about it. With the dispenser missing, they can send more satellites up into space. So chances are high they have more functioning satellites up in orbit than with the traditional way. Well played, SpaceX. The vacuum-optimized version of the Holy Grail Raptor engine might make it into Starhopper sooner than we expected. So according to the master himself, this could happen soon. Against what he said four months earlier that he would be using unoptimized Raptor engines to shorten development and save some money, well, it looks like it's gone quicker than expected or even likely he just chose differently. But what about it? Why is this significant? First of all, this would mean that we see yet another engine configuration change away from the all sea level Raptors to a 50-50 build with sea level Raptors and vacuum optimized Raptors. Secondly, it would mean that they are most certainly further ahead with Raptor development. If they consider optimizing it for vacuum right now, that basically means that the sea level version is probably almost finished and just needs some minor tweaking. Full-scale Raptor tests are going well. That is good news for everybody who wants to see that thing fly, including me and you. Third Falcon Heavy launch is less than a month away. SpaceX is almost exactly one month away from launching its third Falcon Heavy into orbit. 
Remember that glorious thing that brought us these pictures? Right. Amazing. To complete this task, they will need to fully integrate the rocket and do a static fire test within one week of the launch. Exciting times. But what about it? What makes this mission special to me and you? First of all, it's the first military mission that will use a refurbished and flight-proven rocket. As the US Air Force is very cautious on what to send their payload into orbit with, they yet have to book a flight on a reused rocket. This will change now. What this means is that the United Launch Alliance's monopoly with the Delta IV Heavy and the Atlas V rocket, well, will vanish. Their upcoming smart Vulcan engine reuse is likely not to happen until the mid-2020s, most likely 2024 to 2026. And that's only a reuse of the engines. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see a serious competitor, but as of now, only Blue Origin with their new Glenn rocket is going to be a competition for the Falcon Heavy and its reuse capabilities, and that's planned for 2022. So let's compare the Department of Defense's only two options as of now. I know, others have done that comparison a million times, but I think it's fair to mention it again. Delta IV Heavy can get 28,790 kilograms to low Earth orbit, and that costs roughly $350 million. Of course, the real price is kept a secret. Why would you do that? The competitor, as mentioned being tested for the first time with a reused rocket now, is the Falcon Heavy. It lifts 63,800 kilos into LEO and costs 90 million per launch. Thoughts? SpaceX has cannibalized the launch market rapidly in the last few years, rising up to a whooping 63% global market share in 2018. With this mission, SpaceX will take yet another share of this market by getting the first milestone in certifying Falcon Heavy reused rockets for the Department of Defense. I'm not all about doom and gloom, but this might seriously endanger ULA as they are right now, well, dependent on military contracts. Reused rockets are clearly the future of space. So the US Air Force has basically two options right now. Either stay with traditional rockets and risk falling behind, or switching to reusable rockets as fast as possible. Of course, SpaceX is happy to deliver. Secondly, this mission is yet another milestone for SpaceX, as it will be the first Falcon Heavy launch to reuse two boosters. As you might remember, the center core of the first Falcon Heavy mission was lost at sea as it crashed into the water right next to the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You because it ran out of fuel. The second core, called B1055, was unfortunately lost as well. It landed fine on the drone ship, but heavy seas prevented the workers from securing it on the deck and eventually it toppled over. So that's gone for good too. Luckily, the third mission was planned with a new center core initially. So there was no delay for mission number three anyway. It will use the two boosters from the second Falcon Heavy mission from April 11th, which also was the commercial debut of Falcon Heavy. The two side boosters, known as B-1052 and B-1053, completed flawless landings and were quickly brought horizontal and back to the main hangar of Pad 39A for refurbishment and inspections. Santa Claus number 3 completed its static fire test back in late April and then was sent from the manufacturing plant in McGregor, Texas up to Cape Canaveral in Florida. On a side note, in particular, one of the several payloads on the mission is quite exciting too. It's Planetary Society's second attempt at a functional light sail. After launching Light Sail 1 on June 7, 2015, this is Planetary Society's second test. The CubeSat, roughly the size of a loaf of bread, so rather small, will travel into orbit with the rocket and then unfold into a light sail, roughly the size of a boxing ring, and then only with the push of the sun, it will try to raise its orbit. Proposed over 40 years ago, Carl Sagan shared this dream of effortlessly sailing the stars only using the push of the sun as propulsion. Go Planetary Society, go Light Sail too. So stay tuned, the clock is ticking. Soon a new or old Falcon Heavy will light up the sky and amaze us again. Good times. Last but not least, it's Hopper time. SpaceX is continuing work in Boca Chica on the infamous Starhopper. 
On May 20th, SpaceX technicians successfully stacked the nose cone on the prototype. Trusty Mary, aka Boca Chica Gal, has provided us with a clear picture of SpaceX's success in completing the task yet again. Yet again? As you all might remember, back in January, the hopper fell over due to wind. This set back the whole project by quite a few months, more than initially anticipated by Elon and his team. Gone with the wind. Lesson learned. Now, a few months later, the new and improved Starhopper is rapidly taking shape, with the nose cone being the most recent addition to that awesome project. Also, Elon recently revealed in a series of tweets that untethered flights will happen sooner than later. They will reach a height of up to 5000 meters and are in preparation right now, as Elon says the next step will be to remove the tether and unleash the beast. This is what we've been waiting for. History in the making. Be sure to check back to the channel for the latest in Hopper Unleashing. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Tell me in the comments of what you liked about this episode. I'm not a scientist, so is there anything I got wrong or even missed? Feel free to also discuss in the comments. What do you think about Starlink? Do you think it will revolutionize the way we access the internet? Will the ULA have trouble with the third upcoming Falcon Heavy mission and will the infamous Starhopper fly untethered sooner than later? Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like because that's what helps me the most. Also, hit me up on my Patreon page as this gives me the ability to spend more time on what I love doing the most to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time.